Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, this Wednesday evening for our Bible study. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. We are thankful to God that we have uh, given this opportunity to come together as his children and to share his word and to hear from him. And I pray tonight that we will receive from the Lord that which he desires for us to hear. Uh, we will be going right into our Bible study. We'll do a short prayer. Father, I just thank you, Lord, tonight for your blessings. I thank you, dear God, for your goodness towards us. Dear God, in all things, you are to be glorified. I know that a number of our people, dear God, need healing hands. And Father, we are praying tonight that you will grant that, that you will grant healing to us all. Father, if there is a physical ailment, that God, you will help us. And God, in every way that you can, in any way that you can, you work, Lord, to fulfill the promise, dear God, that you are our healer and our deliverer. And so, dear God, however you choose to work, do it, Lord, for your glory and honor. I thank you, God, for your blessings. I thank you for healing that goes with us, that goes before us. I thank you for your presence in the form of the Holy Spirit who is with us, who leads and directs our part, and we give you praise praise. I pray tonight, dear God, that you will be glorified in this time, and dear God, that you would heal us from every manner of sickness, physical, uh, spiritual, uh, emotional, financial, in our relationships. God, that you will grant us healing. Bless our country. Bless our world at large. May you grant the leaders of our world, dear God, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, dear God, to fulfill your word and your promise to us as your children. God, may you raise up people that will stand firm upon on your word and that will stand upon the truth of your word. We thank you, dear God, and may the anointing of the Holy Spirit be with us tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus and I give you thanks. Amen and amen and amen. All right, as I uh, shared, we are not going to do any songs tonight. We're just going to go right into our study. So for the next 45 minutes or so, I trust that you can stay with us and that you will receive from the Lord that which he has promised to us as his children. We are studying tonight about anger. And, you know, as we have been doing the last couple of weeks, it's all about our emotions. And there are so many things that goes on in our lives as far as our emotions are concerned. And uh, I just uh, pray tonight that uh, you, something that is said that will minister to you and that will speak into your heart and into your spirit. So here we go with our word for tonight. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, as we go into this word, as I shared, uh, over, overcoming anger is the big uh, topic tonight, overcoming anger. And this is, you know, last week we talked about overcoming guilt. And uh, we've got about two more sessions in this series and two or three more, I believe it is. And just pray that God will grant us uh, whatever it is that we need that all of these sessions will minister to us and grant us the victory that we need in all of these areas of our lives. It was Thomas Jefferson who said that when angry, count to 10 before you speak. If you're very angry, count to 100. I wanted to share with you, you know, some examples of anger. And, and in this, I, you know, I just wanted to uh, share with you that, you know, th there are four examples I'm going to share with you. Marge had worked all day cleaning the ladies' meeting uh, room that she was going to have the next morning. She had even scrubbed the carpet, a job uh, not a job not for her or her husband. Feeling very pleased with her accomplishments of the day, she sat in her kitchen drinking deserved, deservedly a cup of coffee. Suddenly, the door popped open and in ran her nine-year-old son, Ted, who had been in school all day. He was now chasing the family dog, Blackie. Marge couldn't believe her eyes as she sat frozen in her seat watching. Ted chased Blackie through the living room into the den and around and around the dining room table. After recovering from the initial shock of seeing the muddy tracks on her clean carpet, she exploded. Another one. Bill had been waiting in line for an hour to buy tickets for a concert. This was one event he did not want to miss. He just as he was about to step up to the window and purchase his tickets, a man stepped in front of him and proceeded to place his order. Bill blew his cool, shouting at the line breaker. Another one. The local newspaper recently carried an account of a father who had beaten his infant son to death. 
The father's reason for doing it was because the child made him mad when he cried during the night. A man was having his car, this is the fourth one, a man was having his car filled with a, uh, a the, filled with gas and the attendant started to use the name of the Lord in vain. Uh, the man got angry and he shouted at him, please watch your language and he started screaming at him and I do not appreciate you talking about my heavenly father in the manner in which you do and the manner in which you do uh, and it ended up in a very heated argument. So the illustration, the emotion described in the four illustrations I just shared with you uh, is what we call anger. Anger is sometimes a perfectly normal reaction and on some occasions it can and it does get out of hand and it can lead to serious or sinful actions. The challenge comes in how we handle our anger. Do you handle it correctly or does your anger rule you? Socrates, or Socrates, or Socrates uh, finding himself very mad, and I know I'm not saying that word right, um, but Socrates, uh, finding himself very mad at the slave said, I would beat you if I were not so angry. Uh, then let's look at an illustration here. Two boys named Gus and Jeannie were taking turns spinning a top. They had but one top, which they spun alternately. As time passed, they began to quarrel and soon became very angry. Jean said, it is my turn to spin the top. Gus said, no, you lie. They started hitting each other in a great rage and in the fight, Jean took a knife from his pocket and stabbed Gus, who died a few minutes later. One lost his life, the other ended up becoming a murderer merely to determine whose turn it was to spin the top. Anger is not a laughing matter. It is a very serious emotion that must be properly understood and controlled. When you think about this, you know, 14-year-old twin boy in Tennessee argued over some chewing gum. One stabbed the other to death. What is anger? And, you know, let's, let's define and describe what anger is in the next few minutes here. Anger, like all emotions, is created by our thinking. Our thoughts push the anger button. It begins with, the, with an event that you notice and the interpretation that you place on it. The result of your interpretation is feeling and feeling leads to emotional action, in this case, anger. This therefore makes it very difficult to give a definite definition of anger. Let's look at some of the definitions, you know, that we uh, can find around, you know, when we, when we do some searching. Anger is the result of emotional frustration or hostility. Uh, Webster define it as a hostile feeling of displeasure that may result from injury, mistreatment, or opposition. There are several words that are translated anger, that, that several words translated anger from the Greek. Orgy, noun, uh, originally any natural impulse or desire or disposition came to signify anger as the strongest of all passions. Ephesians 4 and 31 tells us, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Colossians 3 and 8, but now you yourselves are to put off all of these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. First Timothy 2 and 8. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to rot, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Uh, Tumas is the, is the other word uh, from the Greek word anger, indicates a more agitated condition of the feelings and this is an outburst of wrath from, in, from an inward indignation. It, while orgy suggests a more settled or abiding condition of mind frequently with a view of taking revenge. Orgy is less sudden in its rise than termos. Thomas expresses more the inward feeling, orgy the more active emotion. Thomas is translated rart. Uh, or, origizo, origizo, a verb, means to provoke, to arouse 
and to anger. Ephesians 4 and 26, uh, ang be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Matthew 5 and 22 tells us, But I say unto you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. The prodigal son, older brother, he was angry and he would not go in. Anger will make us do some very strange things, uh, things that we would not normally do. Anger occurs when our desires or our purposes are blocked. The following words will illustrate the various forms that anger may take. Anger may be hidden. It might be something that is brewing up inside of you, boiling over uh, at a certain point in time. Psychologists will tell us that most anger is concealed within the heart of a man. It is like a basketball submerged in water, and sooner or later, if it is not properly handled, it will pop to the top. So true. Anger may take the form of a mild annoyance. It may upset you when a person pops his gun, his gum, for example. Anger may be a short outburst of resentment. You may resent, resent it uh, to, uh, to, you may resent it to resent it for a few moments when someone cuts in front of you on a freeway. Um, angry or uh, anger may be carried as hatred in the heart. Uh, an illustration here, one man for 20 years because uh, he was um, uh, this, she was embarrassed um, by him one time in class. He was angry uh, then but couldn't do anything about it. Anger sometimes takes on the form of aggression. People try to overthrow governments because they don't like their policies. Children become bullies because of anger. Anger can also manifest itself in revenge. A man will let the air out of his neighbor's car tires because it was parked in his driveway. Anger can also be explosive. This was seen in the case of a man who went into a rage. He killed his boss because he was fired from his job. And rage is very, very dangerous. In fact, more and more, we see a lot of this happening all over. People end up going back to their workplaces that they were fired from and uh, the rage that builds up in them and they go in and they shoot and they kill, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, a few people, sometimes scores of them. Uh, workplace shootings, school shootings, etc. Uh, shows that what we're talking about. Anger is an emotion, emotional capacity that is given to us, each of us, by God. Anger by itself is neither good or bad. It is how we handle it that makes the difference. The scripture reminds us to be angry and sin not, as we just read a little while ago. Anger sometimes is no more than a mild case of irritation. One lady confessed that she became irritated or angry when the preacher went overtime in a sermon. <laughs> At the Frederick local church that we attended for about nine years, uh, Brother Martin uh, would always, you know, he carry around the keys and he had it in his pocket or sometimes in the seat next to him. And he would take out the keys about two minutes before 12. And if Pastor Cox was going over 12, if, you know, the, the clock struck 12, he would start shaking his keys and playing with it and making loud noises to make the preacher aware that he had gone over his time. It became very irritating to the rest of us who were enjoying the word of God. Uh, not all anger is wrong or sinful. Paul wrote, be angry and sin not, as we just said. The challenge is to know when to stop, and most people don't. Uh, many years ago, Henry Beecher wrote these fine remarks about the nature of anger, and he said, there is an anger that is damnable. It is the anger of selfishness. There is an anger that is majestic as the frown of Jehovah's brow. It is the anger of truth and of love. If a man meets with injustice, it is not required that he shall not be roused to meet it. But if he is angry after he has had time to think upon it, that is sinful. The flame is not wrong, but the coals are. You get that? The flame is not wrong, but the coals are. Anger under proper control can be a very necessary reaction. It can be used as a tool of communication to let others know how we feel about their conduct. 
God gave us anger as an emotion for constructive purposes. It is only through his word and his power that we can make the best use or usage of our anger. The Bible tells us a lot about anger. So we're going to look there because our, uh, you know, the reason that we're here tonight is Bible study. Um, as we have already noted, anger in and of, in and of itself is not bad or sinful. It is a capacity to feel because of God's creative work. It was given for our good. This is why we must learn to properly control it. First, it may come as a surprise to learn that anger is an attribute of God. There are more than 500 references to anger and wrath in the Old Testament. The Bible reveals that God experiences daily anger, daily anger because of the evil actions of man. You know, there is a scripture that says back in the uh, Noah's time that it had regretted God. It, he had regretted that he had made man. His anger towards uh, humanity was such that he regretted that he had ever made man. That was, that was a terrible time. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 7 and 11, is a just judge and, uh, and God is angry with the wicked every day. The creator of man is emotionally moved when his creation rebels against him. We too should be moved by the ungodliness and sinfulness in this world. We must hate the sin, but we must love the sinner. John 3 and 16. We must always remember that God's anger is free from malice, from injustice, from unethical and hasty qualities. Jehovah God is not an impulsive judge. Amen. The divine anger is to be regarded as the natural expression of his nature, which is absolute holiness, manifesting itself against the rebellion of man. This is why Paul wrote in Timothy 1 and 28, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Hebrews 10 and 30, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. There are many, many examples of uncontrolled anger in the Bible. Uh, Cain became angry and what happened? He murdered his brother Abel. Uh, Genesis, uh, what is that? Four, uh, Genesis chapter 4 verses 3 through 12. Esau resented Jacob for deceiving him, Genesis 27 and 41. King Saul committed many sins in his anger, 1 Samuel 18 uh, verses 8 through 31 and then chapter 4. Haman plotted murder because of his anger against Mordecai, Esther chapter 3 and verse 5. King Ahab hated the prophet Micah and he sought revenge. First Kings 22, 8 uh, through 27. If you don't know these stories, like I say on Monday night, read it because it is very, very interesting and you learn a lot from just reading these portions. Jewish leaders became furious at Jesus and began to develop a plan to destroy him. Luke chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. The Bible commands us to properly handle anger. The scripture says in Psalms 37 and 8, Free from anger, Flee from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 9, Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Proverbs 15 and 18, A wrathful man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger allays contention. Matthew 5 and 22, But I say unto you, Whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And then Proverbs 19 and 19, A man of great wrath will suffer punishment, for if you rescue him, you will have to do it again. The Bible reveals that there is a, a, an approved place for proper anger. Jesus, the perfect Son of God, was moved with anger when he saw uh, the, 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 you know, the, the rich folks or the folks taking advantage of the poor. John chapter 2 verses 12 through 17. This make a buck approach to religion with its 
husk, husk stirring of religion for profit was more than the master could tolerate. You remember the story of when he went into the temple and they were, you know, trying to make a buck off religion. They were selling it. They were selling everything. And, you know, this is uh, this has grown in, it, in its in intensity. And all around the world today, it happens that people are trying to sell religion and to make a profit from it as much as they can. Uh, he was emotionally moved by the sight and he made a whip of cords and he drove them all out of the temple. The disciples were surprised by his actions, but then they remembered a passage from Psalm 69 and verse 9 where it is written, Paul gives us something very interesting in his remarks about anger in Ephesians. He tells us to be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down upon your rod. Let me go back to something here. Psalm 69 and verse 9, where that particular portion was written about, you know, Jesus himself being angry with people who were taking advantage of religion. Read it when you get a chance. All right, let's move back to where we were. Paul is saying that it is okay to be emotionally moved or vexed as the case may be but the challenge however is not is to not let it move you into the rot zone don't let it take you into the place where you are going to get yourself into some serious trouble our hearts uh, must be clear of all anger by sundown you may be uh, angry but do not let it cause you to sin the problem with anger is that so many times if not control it does causes us or it will cause us to sin and to do some really really stupid things anger must not become an obsession for the devil to use against us i know that there is you know a lot of anger that happens within families um you know like we read earlier on about you know this father uh, taking the life of his child because uh, she was crying all night i i know that there is a lot of anger when it comes to children who are mistreated um badly treated by their parents and by other family members and they grow up to become very angry murderous you know evil people i always say this do not judge people you know by what you see because you never know what a person's going through or what a person has gone through you never know what they have dealt with in their lives and some people have dealt with real hell i mean they have suffered so much and they have suffered greatly at the hands of parents at the hands of family members at the hands of teachers at the hands of uh, preachers at the hands of uh, you know uh, whatever you can count anybody it it happens everywhere and we must be be very very careful that we are not a partaker in this regard so do not allow this you know this anger to become uh, uh, to become built up in us uh, if you cannot handle your anger uh, get before God and pray if you cannot uh, deal with it in that manner seek help from a brother or sister or pastor or somebody that can help you if you can't get help in that way seek uh, the help of a professional who can help you that someone that is trained to deal with matters like these because we need to take care of it before it overcomes us remember you are not the only one who suffers when you become overtaken with anger it is not just you but it is your family it is your friends it is your co-workers it is the people around you you take it out on everybody everywhere anywhere you go uh, you know the devil will use anger uh, for his own purpose he's only asking us that God is only asking us to properly use our emotions the Bible teaches us that we can control our anger. And if we, uh, you know, are pray, uh, if we're praying people, if we are studying God's word and we are students of the word, the Bible will become real in us and we will be able to handle or control our anger. This is not believed by some Christians. Members of the church have been heard to say, I have tried, but I just can't control my temper because my temper seems to get the better of me. And I know a lot of people who have struggles with this. And sometimes it's because, of the, you know, there is a, a an illness. There is a uh, there could be so many reasons the why people, you know, get angry, why people deal with it. Proverbs 29 and 11 tells us a fool will vent all his feelings, but a wise man will hold them. You can be angry without sinning. With God's help, we can control our anger. And I believe that that is very, very possible. Uh, you know, I also know that if we are not able to control our anger, uh, we're going to get ourselves into serious trouble. 
Tyrant Edwards to rule one one's anger as well. To prevent it is still to prevent it is still better. Uh, Seneca says, anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury than the injury that provokes it, because it will cause all kinds of injuries in your mind, in your body, in you know the people around you, and all that stuff. How to control your anger is what I want to deal with for a little while. We're getting down to the end, so stay with me for a little few minutes more. In order to win over anger, you must have a strong desire to do so. This is the beginning place. And if your anger is not, if your desire is not strong, you're not going to succeed at anything. If you don't have the desire to, uh, you know, to overcome guilt or to overcome fear or whatever it be, it it's all in our desire. And this is where it all begins. I must have a strong desire to overcome whatever it is that I'm seeking to overcome. Uh, remember the tragic results of sinful and wrongful anger. Uh, Dr. S.I. Macmillan in his book, None of These Diseases, says that anxiety places more stress on the heart than any other stimulus, including physical exercise and fatigue. That's pretty strong right there. Remember, you're not trying to free yourself from all anger. Some anger is helpful, is healthy, and it's needful. Not all anger is sinful. James 1 and 19 tells us, Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Don't internalize your anger. This is like a pressure cooker. You know, sometimes when untreated, it builds up. And, and you, you know, there could be uh, the, the death of a loved one. It could be the, someone, you know, maybe your loved one is, is sick and you're dealing with that. Maybe it's a parent that is, you know, giving you trouble. In fact, as they grow older and they are facing all kinds of, you know, stuff that you cannot handle or you don't understand. And, and you become angry because your brother or your sister or the rest of the family are not, uh, uh, you know, participating in the manner in which they, they, they should. And this anger builds up. There can be a lot of reasons for this. But if we do not, uh, if we do not handle anger, if we do not take control of it, if we do not get uh, control of the anger, we go, it's going to boil up like a pressure cooker and sooner or later it will, uh, the, the, the lid will, will blow off and the consequences can be major. Anger must be hang, handled in a biblical manner. For us Christians, prayerfully, uh, we need to confront others who may be involved in our problems. We need to pray about what it is that's going on in us. If there is a, you know, someone that's struggling or someone that you have an issue with, we need to prayerfully confront them and, you know, so sort the problem out rather than getting angry over them. Uh, a word spoken in kindness will save a soul and will help us to get rid of some of the, the, the anger that we have have built up in us. This is not to blame them, but to use them as a part of the solution. So if there is an issue with someone, we should try to get that, that uh, we should try to take whatever action to make sure that that does not become something that will boil over and cause a major catastrophe. Ask yourself the question, why am I feeling angry? What is going on? What has caused me to get to this place? What is taking place? Question the, the, the feeling that you're feeling inside of you. Is there a valid basis for my anger? What can I do to handle this anger? How am I going to handle it? How am I going to deal with it? What means am I going to take? Or how am I going to solve this? How am I going to get over it? Uh, it is very important for us to sit down, think about these things, because if not, if left unattended, it will destroy you and destroy your life and your home and your family and everything else. What passage of script here is being violated by my anger, by my feelings, by this wrath that is building up inside of me and what, because a lot of us, we don't really, you know, uh, we don't, we don't get into the word to say, well, how am I violating God's word by my actions and whatever they be, you know, whether you are, look, one of the things that God God hates most is a lying tongue, as we learned about in our Bible trivia on Monday. Uh, the idea of, you know, God, I know he, God hates sin, 
But one of the things that he hates most, the scripture says, is that is that of a lying lip. So, you know, when you think about the scripture, what am I violating? What part of the word am I violating by my actions? Never forget this truth. You can stop creating your anger anytime you choose. Anytime you choose, you can stop creating your anger. This is something that you have control of. If not attended to at the very early, uh, earliest of times, it can lead to major problems in your life. So remember this, you are able at the very earliest, nip it in the bud and let God be glorified in your life. Remember that your anger won't change others neither will it cause them to think better of you. In fact, far from it, it will cause them to think a whole lot worse of you. Uh, rectify any wrongs that may exist between you and your brother or your sister. Look, there are there is always going to be this pent-up emotion if left unattended. If there is something that needs to be rectified between a brother and yourself, rectify it. If they're not making the attempt, you go make the attempt. If there is something that needs to be attended to, whether, whatever it be, try to make that attempt and go rectify that situation between you and your brother. There is a bunch of scriptures there for you to read to see how the Bible tells us to handle these matters. Matthew 5, 23 and 24, Matthew 18, 15 through 17. Remember, God commands us uh, to not let anger lead to sin because that's where the trouble comes. Work on redirecting your anger. Let it go. Let it go. Let it lead you to solutions instead of bitterness and resentment. Get out, take a walk. Uh, get out, take a drive. Get out and go somewhere where you can relax. What is a relaxing place for you? Uh, you know, maybe you, maybe your thing is music. Maybe it's a dance. Maybe it's something that you can get a, a free a release from. Whatever it be, work on redirecting your anger and let it lead you to solutions instead of bitterness and resentment. Be aware of situations that will cause you to lose control. You, you know yourself. You know the, the trigger points in your life. Uh, the things that will cause you to lose control. You may be wise to avoid these situations in the early stages of your efforts to win over anger. Uh, you must know what it is that will trigger you. And if you're getting to that point, you need to walk away. You need to take care of it in that moment. As, as we found out earlier on, you know, count from 1 to 10. If that does not work, count to 100. But whatever it is that you do, make sure that you get to a place where you can control it. Be quick to forgive. One of the things that, uh, uh, that allows anger to find a space in our life is unforgiveness. When we live a life of unforgiveness, we build up a lot of junk in our heads and in our minds and in our thoughts. And it, 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 is, it becomes anger and it becomes wrath and it becomes, you know, a lot of other things. And uh, some of these things finds their root in unforgiveness. So it is important that we forgive. Like we shared, you know, Jesus himself told us that, you know, if you don't forgive others, then I can't forgive you of your sins. So if if it requires several times in one day, be quick to forgive. For, forgive those who sin against us because in doing so, you're not just, you know, you're freeing yourself, you're freeing your mind and you are allowing yourself to walk in that freedom. Remember that you can't control the actions or the speech of others. You have no control over it. People are always going to try to get you angry, to get you upset, to get you, you know, doing things that you're not supposed to. People are always going to come against you. Their life is unhappy. They've got to make your life unhappy. It's it's a matter of, you know, what people are. The devil will work through them and he will try to get to you this way. If he knows that you have a weakness as far as anger is concerned, uh, you know, and controlling your anger, he is going to send people in your part that will, you know, push you to the extreme. So remember, you can't control control the actions or the speech of others. So let it go. Walk away from them. Unfriend them. Uh, do whatever you have to do uh, so that you can control how you react to them. Uh, replace your anger with love. Jesus tells us that we should love our enemies, that we shall do good to them that despitefully use us. You say, but pastor, where is that in the Bible? Read the scripture. Uh, there is a 
There's a thought that one preacher shared recently in a group that I'm in, a pastor's group, and he shared, he says, I went to this church and I was preaching from Ephesians chapter 2. And he says at the end of the service, you know, I preached, I, I recited the whole of it um, without going into, you know, picking up my Bible like my dad would do. And my dad would quote whatever it is the sermon was. And if he had 15 scriptures, he didn't go into the Bible per se. And I mean, open the book. He would just quote it. So, you know, he said, I knew the whole chapter and I quoted it. I used it in my preaching. And after the service, a few people gathered together and they says, preacher, uh, when are you going to learn to preach the Bible? He, he, just, he just shook his head and he walked away. Look, Listen, we don't often realize that the word of God is powerful. And, and what we need to do is to recognize the word and, and what God has shared with us. So replace your anger with the love, the love that God gives to us. Do something positive for the other person. Uh, you know, remember Romans 12 and 20 tells us, Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. This is your enemy we're talking about. Not just doing it for the people that you can get along with. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. I know we can pass judgment on people sometimes, but look, when you have a calling from God and God has given you something, do it for the glory of God. Do something positive for that person who is trying to hurt you. If your enemy is thirsty, give him a drink. Uh, for in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. He's going to want to know where you're coming from. How can you do this when I've been treating you this badly? Don't associate yourself with hot-tempered people. They're going to uh, they're going to make you become one of them. Remove yourself from hot-tempered people. Proverbs 22, 24, and 25 says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man do not go, lest you learn his ways and you set a snare for yourself. So be very, very careful. Uh, set, use your creative imagination to win over anger. It is very important that we use our creative imagination to win over this anger thing, this anger issue that, that destroys, you know, it destroys. I, I tell you, you know, like I, I've seen in churches, I've been around and I shared this recently in one of my sermons. I've been around the church for a long time. I've seen a lot of things. And, and I've seen, you know, there have been business meetings where we were, uh, we had fist fights, where we had such problems that the church emptied out. There were, you know, a hundred people attending church. And after the business meeting, it was like 15, 20 of us because the devil found the way in and he caused us to destroy, uh, you know, by our actions, we destroyed the body of Christ. The anger will destroy your family. Uh, there are men and women who have such anger that they do not know how to control it. And so they fight, they beat up on their spouse. And this goes both ways. It happens more with a man over his wife, uh, but it happens uh, the other way around also. It happens with parents beating up their children. Fathers, do not provoke your son or your children to anger. The scripture reminds us. It happens even with mothers, you know, treating their children with great anger. Sometimes the frustration of a dad who is having affairs with other women men or doing other stuff, you know, not coming home, not taking care of the family and she becomes frustrated and she beat, takes it out on her children or, you know, whatever it is that happens. There is a lot of things that takes place because of anger. It can destroy a school. It can destroy a church. It can destroy a, a neighborhood. It can destroy our relationships with our neighbors. It can destroy our relationships. Look at, look at the fight that goes on with, you know, the Republicans and the Democrats and they're always fighting. If the Democrats are in power, the Republicans are always fighting them. And if the, you know, and vice versa, it works both ways. And listen, in everything, we are so wanting to get ahead. We're so wanting to get ahead that we will destroy everything in our part or everyone in our part. But we are called upon as children of God to use our creative imagination to win this battle over anger. It is a battle that we must win if we are going to succeed in our lives. Pray for God to help us. Pray that God will help us, uh, you know, and that he will give us the wisdom that comes from God because we need it so badly. We need the wisdom how to handle things. I love the song that says, Lord, give me wisdom and show me what to do. Uh, Lord, I look to you. 
I won't be overwhelmed. Give me wisdom to know just what to do. This is something that I prayed for. I heard that song back in Santa Barbara. They were doing it in the church while we were there. And I have loved it ever since then. It was the first time I heard it. And, you know, it's the thought in my mind that God give me wisdom. Give me wisdom to know how to handle this matter. How to deal with this sickness. How to deal with this problem. How to deal with this, uh, this situation that I'm dealing with. Pray for help and, and for God's wisdom. Uh, that that will be granted to us to be able to deal with the things that we're dealing with and this one very very important stop pinning labels on people we have a way of putting labels on people look there are people every one of us are humans we all work hard we all try to do the best we can most people right i would dare say most people they work hard they're very very you know, the the hard working people who get up there and do everything to take care of the things that they need to take care of. But we are so quick to put labels on people. We put labels on the Chinese. We put labels on the Indians. We put labels on the blacks. We put labels on the whites. We put labels on, you know, everybody, if their nationalities or their, their, their speech or whatever it is. When you think, for example, that a person is stupid or dumb, you know, we, we always, you are stupid you know, or you are dumb, like we are so bright, that we are so, you know, full of wisdom, that we don't have any dumb moments, every one of us have some dumb moments in our lives, some stupid moments, and his action will usually raise anger in you, when we respond to people in ways that will make them tick, their anger is going to be turning towards us, uh, think of everyone as created by God, and in his image, every person, no matter where they come from, they are created by God. I wish we would get to the place where we would see people as they are. Remember, Jesus had to take a man and he had to show him, you know, like three times. He had to put, uh, uh, you know, stuff in his eyes and, and tell him to go wash. And, and he asked him the question, how did you see men? I see men as trees walking. And, you know, the third time he says, I see men as they are. And I pray that we can get ourselves washed in the blood of Jesus and that we can come back thinking, I see men as they are. I see them in their struggles. I see them in their hurts. I see them in their pain. If you ever deal with Vilma, you would know what I'm talking about. Vilma, uh, Cheryl, some of these folks, uh, none of you guys deal with a lot of people, a lot of parents, uh, you know, in the work, in the job that you do, all the other guys who are involved in that. Whatever your job is, you deal with so many. I know so many people who have been mistreated, ill-treated by their fathers, by their mothers, by their st- uncles by their uh, you know nephew whatever it be they've been mistreated ill-treated they've been taken advantage of it happens in the church it happens everywhere in the workplace all over it happens people take advantage of one another but i think of everyone and this is what god wants us to see this evening think of every person around us as created in god's image the same blood that you have, that same blood that flows from you and it's red, is the same blood that will come from them if you cut them. It's the same blood. We're all created in God's image. And I want us to be able to love one another in that way. Thank thank God for irritations because they are growth opportunities. When you, you know, sometimes we become irritated with some things, with situations, and they are growth opportunity. I can see myself growing from this because I become irritated with the way people are treated, with the way people are, you know, uh, taught off. I, I, I see why people react sometimes the way that they do. I learn from, you know, maybe their mis- mistreatment by authorities. I, I, I learn how they were, uh, you know, handled badly by the police or by other people. There are so many things that happens and these irritations can become growth opportunities. Each victory makes us stronger in the Lord. Put yourself in the other person's shoe. Try to see his or her point. Empathy is a great virtue and I believe that this is so important that we put ourselves in the, sh- in the other person's shoe. What, what is he going through? What is she going through? What is, what is causing my neighbor to act the way that he is or she is? And what is causing my friend the work to act like he is or she is? What is it? Put yourself in the other person's shoe and try to talk to them. Try to pray for them, to pray with them and have a conversation with them. Empathy is a great virtue. Anger is an emotional capacity given to man by God. It plays a positive role in man's daily life. The challenge for us here is to, that, that, that we are faced with is to keep it under proper control. Keep your anger under 
proper control. God's word guarantees that we can win this battle, that we can win this war over anger. Hallelujah. And I believe that this is what God desires for us tonight, that we can win this war over anger. What are we going to do? We're going to work at it. So Holy Spirit, I pray tonight and I pray with my people that God, you will grant us the victory, that God, you will grant us the strength, that you will grant us, oh God, the wisdom to know how to deal with this emotional issue of anger that sometimes controls us and makes us act in ways that God that we should not. Father, we are we are your children, we are your people, we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And God, we call upon to shine our lights for your glory and for your honor. So I pray tonight that God, you will be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, be lifted high in our lives. I pray tonight and we give you thanks. I pray, God, that you would heal us. There, God, those that are dealing with issues of anger in their lives, there, God, where it becomes uncontrollable, I pray there, God, that you would heal, bring healing to them. Father, that you will use whatever means, whether it be one of us, whether it be a counselor, whether it be a psychologist, or whether it be, a, oh God, just a miraculous work from the hand of God. However, there, God, I pray that you will give us wisdom so that we will learn how to manage and handle our anger. Anger. God, we ask for your help and we ask for your for your blessings, for your healing in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us tonight. I trust that tonight's word has been a blessing to you. And somehow, some form, this word has, you know, uh, ministered to your heart tonight. I pray that you will be blessed by it. If you have any questions or any things concerning this, give me a call uh, when you get a chance. For the next few days, give me a little break. But, you know, sometime after the weekend, give me a call and let's discuss what we are talking about. I thank the Lord for his blessings and favor. We look forward to you joining us tomorrow night for our our fellowship hour and then on Friday for our time of prayer and devotion. This weekend we're celebrating pastor's appreciation. Come join us in person. This past Sunday it was so exciting to see a good crowd of people in church in person and I pray that you can come join us this Sunday in Jesus name. So may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit rest remain and abide with us now and forevermore we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good night and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord.